Cool. Hopefully that means the recording started. Um, all right, so this is the June, the June Temple Community Call 2022. Thanks for coming. Um, agenda's over here. Feel free to add anything do you want. We'll also, I think towards the end, just have an AMA Q&A kind of time period. We can chat about anything the community would like. Uh, but in the meantime, we'll kind of go through these. There's Ananya. We'll go through these uh, 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 points. I'd say we don't have a huge uh, agenda for today, but I think there's some cool stuff to talk about. Um, and then, yeah, like I said, anyone's welcome to throw something in the chat or unmute and talk or just put something in the doc, whatever kind of works for you the best to, to kind of get a question or talking point over to the team. So to start, oh, dang, I meant to do this before the call, but I clearly forgot. We'll just kind of go down this list here. Two TraceQL PRs are up. Uh, one was merged. Marty uh, reviewed my design doc PR yesterday. Um, there were some changes to it kind of um, as I was writing the parser and kind of running into maybe some actual real problems, um, you know, like, you know, issues with implementation while I was building it kind of made some small changes to make up for that. But for the most part, the core concepts uh, thing has not changed since we initially um, posted it. All the same ideas are there, just some very minor syntactic changes. And I'm kind of looking for it, but I can't find it. I want to post it in the doc. Ah, man, it, it's been up for a while. I had to go three pages deep in the pull request, the closed pull request. So this is the, the core concepts PR, like I said. Um, please review if you want. And then secondly, a parser PR is up. And uh, I think I have some small changes to it. Marty gave me some good feedback there. Um, so I have some small changes to it before I um, um, before I merge it, just based on some of his feedback. But the parser is up. Um, and so hopefully we'll get that merged soon. Uh, now to talk a little bit about that kind of where the where the team is and where we're headed next. Um, TraceQL, we really wanted to get some momentum there. We, we we've done a lot of work in terms of design. I wanted to get some actual code on the ground, which is why we put this parser together. And I think it'll be a good chance again for people who are watching the project community to kind of keep an eye on our longer term goals. But Parquet is the main focus of the team right now. So Marty's in the nine, you have some good information to share there. But even uh, I'd say in the next week or so, I'm going to switch off and become a lot more serious about Parquet as well. Um, in particular, the back end is looking quite good. They, um, they can give you some details, but we have a functioning Parquet back end now, and it's running in a development cluster. Um, but in order for TraceQL to be implemented, we have this problem where we have to be able to run those queries against the most recent traces that sit in the ingester. Uh, and those traces still are in the older formats. So I think the next thing for me will be to get serious about that, because we can't move forward with the TraceQL until we have um, our most recent traces in this kind of same column or format or something similar that we can do some of these more complicated queries against. So. <clears throat> Um, TraceQL is going to be shelved for a little bit, maybe a couple months while I get into that code, start helping that team out. And Anya and Mar Marty have been really carrying the load here. Um, I'm going to get involved more heavily and start helping with that part of the code while they continue working on the back end, tuning it, and getting it into some of our more um, productive clusters, larger clusters. Um, but I'll get let them give you more details there. Also going to remove this cloud running sys to blow Parquet because it is related to Parquet. So um, TraceQL is in a good spot. Please take a look at that PR. Um, if you're interested in the language, I think the core concepts is a great start. I think the parser PR is going to help a lot as well. Um, you'll see test cases in there um, and all kinds of good information about the, what the language will actually look like um, that you're, as you're typing it to, uh, you know, to find traces. Next, I'm going to hand off to Marty and Ananya. I'm not sure who wants to take this, or they can just both speak at the same time very rapidly. I think that would be pretty clear. OK, three, two, one, <laughs> go. Yeah. OK. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, so uh, these guys have got some really good updates on where Parquet is. Sure, OK. Yeah, hi, everyone. 
Um, so yeah, we've been running the kind of like this parquet branch in a development cluster internally. Um, it's about 10,000 spans a second, like which is a pretty decent you know, size. Like we feel good about the performance, the memory usage, resources, um, speed, things like that. So it's looking good. Um, what we're wrapping up here is what we would consider like it's stable but still experimental. So this um, in the link here in the document, there's the PR to actually merge this. And so we're kind of putting finishing touches on that right now. And it'll be, you know, you could turn it on, you could play with it. It would be experimental at that load. Um, and then the second link here in the document now is what we would consider what we really need to make it this production worthy. So that's making it, taking it to much larger scale. And some of these other things that um, are only really needed at that other scale, like maybe some caching improvements and things. Yeah, so that's the current state of it. Um, yeah, what else could we talk about for that? It's really cool. We're, we're really happy with it, how it's working so far. Yeah, I'd say I've looked at that cluster some and done some of the queries across that. Um, it's definitely looking really good. I really am looking forward to getting into our ops cluster, which is 2 million spans a second. That's really where these ideas, I think, are going to get proven out. So. The fact that it's stable and the resources are looking in line with what we were doing previously is amazing. Um, so yeah, push it to ops, push it to yeah, prod. It's, it's, it's <laughs> mostly the querying is mostly broken if you if you test it now, but that's just <laughs> <laughs> but we're on top of it. Um, that's right. Yeah, I think like just a couple of final touches and mm -hmm. that PR will be ready for review. I think we can take it from there. Parquet in particular is going to allow us our, to search significantly faster just because we're going to be able to pull so much less data from the back end um, and it parses faster. Um, why don't we put a link up to the repo we're using? I want to give credit to the segment folks. Uh, this thing is ridiculously good. Um, but when we first were looking at this whole problem of how to do a new backend, there was some Parquet libraries exist, or some Parquet libraries existed for Go, but the, you know, Marty and I were playing with these, and they were instantly non-starters. It took days to figure out that it was not worth pursuing. And this is a library that actually gets the job done, can be used at scale, and can be used in an actual production large-scale application. So pretty exciting. Um, Cloud Run exists. Going to have to pivot a little bit here. So, uh, Cloud Functions, Google Cloud Functions. We uh, we've talked about this a lot before, but we use serverless to do our search, to do uh, you know our searching in massive parallel. Um, but Cloud Functions only supports Go one sixteen, and the Parquet library, this Parquet library right here, is using Go one eighteen features, and they have support for one seventeen. But 116 is just missing some of the some of the things they're using, and it was we we're trying to look at how to make this library 116 compatible, and we it's possible, but it was just we felt like we were digging ourselves in a hole, and that we didn't really want to put ourselves in a position where, you know, with Google Cloud Functions, we were always ha having to wait on them to upgrade to use newer Go features and newer uh, right uh, Go versions because. It would just be a fight constantly. For years, we would be working with libraries, having to make sure that they were supported the older Go versions. So we've moved to Google Cloud Run um, internally in our ops cluster uh, as of yesterday. <laughs> and uh, I should submit a PR, I'd say, hopefully this week, but maybe early next week, where um, we change the documentation over. Currently, there's documentation about using Google Cloud Functions with uh, Tempo. We're going to use Cloud Run um and uh updates uh the the build process and all of that so we're moving to cloud run and we can think we can basically get the same speeds uh, it was a little bit different kind of an experience it's definitely meant for like a slightly different kind of workload but honestly I feel like it might even be more meant for the things we're trying to do with it i think we could probably squeeze a little bit more uh, performance out of it with some tuning another really cool thing is cloud run is built on top of k native um, with, which I'm probably pronouncing horribly wrong. But uh, Knative is a serverless platform on top of uh, Kubernetes. So um, I think it opens up options in the future in terms of you know how we can run serverless with Tempo. Um, if we integrate with Cloud Run, we're technically integrating with Knative. And uh, in the future, maybe we run Knative internally. Maybe people who have clusters 
uh, in places that don't have serverless technologies available will prefer something like Knative to uh, AWS Lambda or Google Cloud Run. So uh, I think it's overall a good switch. It was just kind of a curveball at the last second. Um, and hopefully in the next uh, yeah, couple of days, we'll get up a PR that will make some of those changes. So if you are using some of that serverless function functionality, you probably will have to switch to Cloud Run as well for the Parquet branch, for the, or for the new Parquet features, because it will depend on like 118 and 117 um, features. Yeah, it's very exciting. Um, uh, hmm? Go ahead. It's interesting that uh, the clouds have two different ways of running serverless, and we're kind of seeing similar speeds. And it's also good in a way because we're finally moving off of uh, writing a zip file to GCS and running a function <laughs> from that. So it's not going to be that much better. <laughs> I guess it'll be pushing what? a Docker image. It'll be pushing a Docker container, different <laughs> kind of artifact, but still a yeah. very similar process. Um, and uh, cool. and then running that in in Knative or whatever. The seventeen ways to run containers in AWS. Yeah, I have no idea how many there are in uh, Google Cloud, but uh, yeah. um, are we going to move to one eighteen in Tempo soon? We're on 117 still. Is there a reason for that? Mm -hmm. Nobody knows. We could go to 118 and not use generics. Just throwing generics. that out there. <laughs> I have no, off the top of my head, I can't think of a place in Tempo where generics would make a ton of sense. Uh, maybe there is. I'm not sure. Um, uh, I don't know if 118 came with any performance benefits. I feel like every Go version tries to give you a couple percent back here or there. So I think we should move forward regardless. Cool. Um, metrics generator. Uh, Kunrad, Mario, you two needed to talk at the exact same time now. Um, yeah, some metrics generator updates. Um, so to um, to kind of summarize, so we have right now a couple of really cool Grafana improvements in the pipeline, which I think will be released with like the next version of Grafana. Like I'm not sure if the exact version is known, but Connor was working on integrating um, the metrics generator, the metrics generator into the trace view, and then Joy was also working on um, expanding the service graph uh, page to integrate spam metrics into a table. So those will be, you know, I think those PRs are merged or almost merged and will be like getting into Grafana soon. Um, the next thing we want to focus on with the metrics generator is um, including uh, queues and databases into service graphs. So say you have a system which, um, you know, has two services that are decoupled using Kafka or RabbitMQ, whatever. Um, these connections currently don't show up in service graphs because the span kind is slightly different. But we also want to include that so you can see on service graph, like, you know, hey, you're using this queue and it's processing that many requests per second and average latency is this. So just provide more context. And the same for databases. Um, so we're currently in the, the design phase there, uh, figuring out, you know, how can we capture this information? How can we efficiently store this and expose this to Grafana and then also visualize it? Um, and then the last point around metric generators. So like for the past six to eight months, I don't know, like Mario and I have been focused on metric generator, like building this whole new component, um, designing it and, um, you know, running it in production now. Um, so we're now approaching the end of this project, kind of. So we will be uh, wrapping up with the queues and databases, also making sure that like the last bits are in place, like dashboards, alerts, stuff like that. Um, and from then on, um, we won't be like completely locked onto this project. So it'd be like bit split between everyone in the team. Um, which basically means that if you want to see like certain improvements, certain changes in metric generator, be sure to open a feature request, and we can you know bring this into the next like planning quarterly planning that we do um, to gradually improve it. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if I have to say anything else about the generator. 
So if you're wrapping up the generator and moving on, where are y'all moving to? Um, yeah, I mean, as a KFC, I guess. More parky, probably. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Actually, it's cool. A little bit of both. But yeah, I mean, it's basically like kind of like reprioritizing, however you say that. A mm -hmm. uh, question from Lucas. Yeah, there are two questions, I believe. Oh, go yeah. for it. Oh, how do you get spans yeah. from RabbitMQ and Kafka? Um, um, so the way it works is like usually the queue itself doesn't emit spans, but the process which pushes data on the queue or that consumes data from the queue will create a span. And this is the f this is also described in the hotel semantic conventions. They describe, you know, if you're using a queuing system and you're pushing data on a queue, you should create a span with the operation name. And also a span kind should be um, producer and the same for the consumer side. So there's some kind of conventions there and we plan to use those to detect when you're pushing data on a queue. So what would happen is service A uses the queue to push data on it, service B reads from it. So the span from service A and the span from service B together, we will be able to you know, see the queue in between those two, even if the queue itself doesn't emit any tracing. Uh, and similarly for databases, most databases don't emit tracing data, like there probably are a couple of them. Uh, but we can detect it also using the span. So if your service is doing a database request, it will add a span with span kind, um, something related to databases. I'm not sure what it is. Um, we can detect that and then you know capture that in metrics. So um, tracing with Kafka. If I could jump in here for a minute, tracing with Kafka yeah. has kind of been a topic that comes that has come up every every now and then. I think it's interesting. I don't think there's a standard solution for it, right? Kunrad, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it still requires the application to kind of pass the trace context through the queue itself so that the destination mm -hmm. on the other side can re resume that same trace. So either it's part of the message, like a trace ID is in your message, or maybe there's metadata on the outside of the message payload, but you know, on the message itself, right? So yeah. I think for the, yeah. They need something to c carry the trace context across the queue, yeah. And you have different mechanisms for that. So I actually asked this question forever ago of the auto instrumentation Java. Uh, the OTEL auto instrumentation Java client will pass context through Kafka automatically. Um, but there is, there was like a, I'm trying to find the question now. There's a specific way you have to do it. If you do it the wrong way, it won't work. Uh, if I can find it, I'll, I'll link it in the in the chat. But I guess what I was getting to is, I think some clients do support automatic trace propagation, but I do think Marty's also right. In general, kind of check your documentation. You might have to like cobble something together in your producer consumer um, uh, kind of like libraries. Uh, but you know, you might get lucky, basically. All right, I'm going to find this and I'll, I'll post the link on the doc. But yeah, for this impl implementation, we will be focusing on the hotel semantic convention. So they have some like standards or recommendations. Um, but if there's anything, you know, that we can make it a bit more relaxed, then we can also explore that, of course. Um, and there's a second question from Lucas about, you know, what, what does the kernality of the metrics look like? Um, that really depends. Um, it's very difficult to create the kind of rule because we saw, you know, for every user, it's it's different. It depends on your architecture, the way you've instrumented, um, your volume, and it's not like a fixed formula. Um, so what can happen, for instance, is if you have a fairly simple architecture with like three services, but they're processing a lot of requests, that does not necessarily mean you have high cardinality because your services are simple. You, we might, don't have like a lot of different span names. While on the other hand, if you have a very complicated architecture, which has very low amount of requests, that could still generate a lot of active series because you have a lot of different span names and like um, unique um, services and uh, span names and operations. Um, so yeah. <laughs> this, yeah, we haven't figured out like a good rule yet. 
And what we usually recommend, if you want to try out um, metrics with a metric generator, you can enable it with um, collection disabled. So what we will do is we um, ingest data, we generate active series, but we don't collect samples and remote write them yet. We only keep track of the amount of active series. So that way you can just run it for a couple of hours, for a couple of days. You can see, oh, it's like almost 10,000 active series. And if that's OK, you can enable um, collection, which will um, capture samples and remote write them to your um, time series database. Um, we do this because it's kind of unpredictable. Like, yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, just to quickly expand on it, um, there is a small section on cardinality on the service graph uh, docs, uh, which goes into what Conrad was mentioning uh, of hopes, hopes between different services and how can how that will impact uh, cardinality. Um, so it gives you a very rough formula to um, calculate the metrics cardinality, uh, but yeah, the, the biggest problem is you generally don't know your traces cardinality. So um, yeah, it's uh, the recommendation would be just do a dry run with the metrics generator, uh, generator and yeah, get a feel of what's the number of active series. But yeah, still, so if you want to um, deep dive on, on the topic, that's a starting point. Do we um, have a yeah. quick question? Do we have limits on our side? So if the series exceeds some value, we like log an error and stop writing, perhaps? Yes. Yeah, so we, yeah. go ahead. Yeah, you, you can uh, configure the maximum amount of active series that you have per tenant. And when that threshold is reached, new active series will be dropped. Um, and also, it's important to mention that we peri periodically uh, prune uh, series that are not longer active. So if you hit that threshold, it doesn't mean that you won't ever get a um, new active series ever again. But yeah, as soon as an active series is no longer updated, it will be taken out from the registry and there will be a space for anyone. Yeah. Yeah, this can, for instance, happen if you have like a, a spike in cardinality, maybe some kind of async process kicked in and created a ton of spans. This might blow up cardinality and then like stop again after a while and then, you know, it goes back down again. There was another question. Can you filter by attributes, like ignore service names that are not uh, something? Um, so what you can do is define the dimensions that you want that appear on the metrics. And these are attributes that exist on the traces that will appear as labels in the metrics. Um, it's a allow list. So by default, there are only a few attributes that will get injected as labels to the metrics and you can add any other attribute that exists in your traces. Um, but other than that, than that, there is no sampling or any sampling related techniques that can happen on, on the metric generator. That should happen uh, beforehand. Um, maybe you meant, um, like, do you want to exclude certain traces from the metrics that are generated? Like, um, that's not possible yet, but that would be an interesting feature. Um, so if I'm understanding use case correctly, would that be like, you know, you have some service A, which creates a lot of traces and you don't want metrics for them. So you want to exclude them. Um, yeah, that would definitely be interesting. Um, we can write, write a feature request for that. That's not possible yet, yeah. Yeah, okay. So yeah, you, you want to write some kind of um, expression which says, you know, only generate metrics if the trace or the span fulfills a certain condition, like it has a specific attribute or a specific value, yeah. 
it's not possible yet, but we can definitely add that. Um, I can create a feature request for that. Cool. So yeah, Metrix Generator, a lot of excitement in the community, which is cool. A lot of people have been interested in it, both in Grafana Cloud and from our open source users, which is awesome. Um, and like we said, kind of wrapping it up a bit, but Lucas and anyone else, if you have you know feature requests, just file them as issues on the GitHub repo, and we'll kind of try to prioritize those in the coming, uh, whatever, months, quarters. Um, I think Mario was going to tease the upcoming Grafana Con line session, and he had some awesome thing he's going to show us. That he's not allowed to anymore, but he's going to he's going to make you want it and go to the go to the session. I think. Right. Yeah. Uh, so Grafana Con 2022 is coming up next week. Um, it lasts the entire week, so from June 13th to June uh, 17th. Uh, there is a very extensive agenda. You can check it out. Uh, you can register for free for the entire event and watch as many or as little uh, talks as you want. Uh, but obviously, we want to highlight the uh, tempo talk that we will be uh, giving. Um, so on GrafanaCon uh, 2022, so one year ago, we announced uh, Grafana Tempo 1.0. Um, as this high volume low cost uh, tracing store. But uh, back then it was limited to um, search by ID only, retrieving traces by the trace ID. Um, but since it has evolved uh, so much, today we have uh, search. Um, we have, we're, we're able to derive metrics uh, from the ingested traces. And there are a lot of upcoming uh, new improvements and features. I think we've touched all of them, uh, like TraceQL, um, uh, Parquet, the new columnar format. Um, so yeah, there is a uh, lot of stuff um, that we will be showing. Um, even for the uh, metrics generator that we're wrapping up, uh, I think Congrat already mentioned it. There are still improvements uh, coming up in Grafana. So we're trying to see how we can get more value out of the metrics that we are generating. So we have spam metrics and service graphs. Um, and there is a lot of um, things we can still get out of them in terms of uh, jumping from one telemetry type to the other and just kind of uh, showing uh, the information uh, in a way that it's more valuable to the to the user. Um, so. Yeah, in, in the realm of APM, uh, there's going to be some um, previews that we will show in Grafana.com. Um, and yeah, so this will be, this talk will happen on June 15th, so next Wednesday at uh, 5.30 UTC, uh, sorry, 5th, 17.30. Yeah, I don't know how to say that time. Yes, five in the afternoon. Um, and yeah, and even if you cannot attend, uh, the video will be on demand, I believe. Uh, I hope I'm not saying that wrong. Um, but you can probably find out that in the um, Grafana.com uh, page. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if there will be an AMA at the end, any of the speakers. Yeah, there Should will be, be an AMA. Nice. Um, and yeah, I'm not sure if I'm missing anything. I think you covered it all and more. Cool. So if you're interested in Tempo or watching someone run Doom on Grafana, either of those things, they're equally exciting. Uh, go check out the Grafana Conline sessions next week. And yeah, we were really hoping to show off a new UI feature, uh, but we got the thumbs down on that. So we will be showing off that off next week at the session. Um, hopefully you can attend and check that out. Cool. Finally. And probably also oh, during next community call. No, he'll never talk about it again. The <laughs> only time it'll ever be discussed is next week. <laughs> OK, yeah, we'll do it the next community call. Too. That's that's true. <laughs>
final piece of information, Zach is bringing us uh, talking about a new tempo feature for us called YouTube Stats. Go ahead. Yeah. So uh, for the last, um, I guess this has been a conversation within the company for maybe a couple months now. Different teams are working on trying to figure out what the community looks like and who's using the products and what the shape of that usage is. And so we're going to do the same thing for Tempo. We're going to add uh, a feature that um, includes some anonymous metrics um, from your pods or from your instances and reports those to us so that we can answer certain questions. Like, um, for example, if a configuration is, you know, heavily used, we might want to invest more in, um, you know, that, that particular feature. And conversely, if a feature is not used in the community or, uh, you know, maybe that's not something that's um, uh, important for us to work on. Um, so it should help us drive some decisions and kind of get an idea what the shape of the community is and, you know, what the shape of the usage of Tempo is. Um, like I say, it'll be anonymous. Uh, it'll be opt out. There will be an option for you to disable if, um, if you know, sending anonymous metrics to us uh, makes you a little bit nervous. Um, but it would help us, you know, uh, like I say, answer some questions. So, you know, if you, if you don't have strong feelings, uh, please, you know, consider leaving it on and, uh, so we can get that, that information. Um, yeah, it should be very little, uh, impact on performance. You know, we'll, I think, uh, right now the PR says, uh, every four hours, uh, it'll be reported. So this is infrequent, you know, it should have uh, no impact on any of the components in terms of, uh, in terms of that. Um, there'll be one additional file in your back end that you probably won't even notice. And um, yeah, I think that's pretty much pretty much it. Cool. Give us some examples. What are some of the things that we're, we're uh, planning on sending to the mothership? Yeah, so some of the configuration items specifically around, um, you know, like maybe encodings that are in use, uh, compression that's in use, uh, what backends, you know, like, uh, you know, we should be able to identify even based on the IP that you're reporting from which cloud. Um, I expect to be able to see things like, are you running in Kubernetes or bare metal? Um, you know, those kinds of things I think are, are really interesting. And, um, and where in the world? You know, I think that's also, you know, we're a, we're a global company, we're international, and I think it's kind of interesting to see uh, geo maps are always fun, you know, it gets everybody excited. So that's one thing that, uh, that I'm in particular looking forward to. Cool. All right. Hmm? I was just going to mention also potentially scale, um, you know, if there's, um, you know, different sizes, you know, like what's the average size of a tempo cluster? I think that's an interesting question to ask. So yeah, yeah look forward to it. I'd like to know that too. I know of a few very large clusters out in the wild, but I have no idea what the long tail looks like. How many people are doing what, what sizes? I, th I think that it, personally, I think that uh, interests me the most. All right. Well, here we are towards the end. It's open mic night at the Tempo community call. Uh, feel free to ask anything you need, AMA. Um, <laughs> uh, so far, we've done TraceQL stuff. Like I said, going to get shelved. Everything is going towards Parquet. The next couple months of our lives are going to be this new Columnar format. Almost the whole team. We really are going to get it production ready. Um, get it in 1.5. Start whispering internally about a 2.0, but not say it so loud that it jinxes us. And um, that's going to be the next three to six months of Tempo's life. Uh, and then once that is all in place and ready to go, TraceQL is going to kick back into gear. We have the parser ready, and it's going to be figuring out how to you know, take these structures and then execute them against um, execute them against the Parquet blocks. Metrics Generator, kind of wrapping up a bit, but awesome features there. I'd like to thank Kinrod and Mario for that. Uh, I think they've done an amazing job pushing that project forward. and pitching it to the team, convincing the team it was the right choice. And absolutely, it has been. It's a great new feature for Tempo. Um, and then you should stats and Grafana Conline. Good good community call. Open mic karaoke. Yeah, all right, Ananya. Um, what do you got? Can you sing Staying Alive? Saturday Night Fever, go. I have not heard of that song. So <laughs> <laughs> it's. You're probably too young to know that song. 
<laughs> All right. I guess I've dated myself. Um, cool. Uh, everyone, have an awesome week. Um, hopefully, we'll see you at the Grafonic online session next week, but if not, at the community call in a month. Uh, take care, and I'll see you when I see you. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.